Hello, welcome to 2016. I'm going to show you some stuff today. That's not me, that's a robot I found from when I was a kid because I'm clearing out stuff at my mum's up north and I'm finding all this cool retro futuristic stuff. Anyway, so today I'm going to do about how to make a simple skyscraper using 3D graphics. Yeah, and this um, I'm using Blender. And you can use 3ds max or maya or whatever you want to use um, it's the principles are the same and i'm gonna make this tower here and this tower some of you might recognize it it's um the cn tower in toronto in canada in ontario canada um it's not an exact copy it's just a, it's a basic thing that i got some sketches that you'll see on the blog and um <laughs> and photographs as well and stuff like that so that's basically what we're going to make today. It's very simple, and if you're starting out in 3D, I want to show you how quickly and easily you can do that. So quickly and easily. So I'm going to just go on to another layer, and I'm going to add a cylinder. So I'm going to start with a cylinder, like so, and make sure the vertices are quite a lot in the cylinder, which they are already, because you want nice, smooth sides on the cylinder. And then I'm going to go into edit mode. So other programs, you have to do it a wee bit differently, but you press tab to go into edit modes. So once you're in edit mode, you can edit your vertexes, which are the little dots, um, edges, which are your lines, and faces, which are your polygons. And if you don't really know about how that works, it's fairly easy. And I'm going to just explain to you as we go. Um, so I'm going to select face or polygon, right click in Blender. Blender is a bit of a weird one. Um, usually left click in other programs as well. So I'm going to drag that to about there. Then I'm going to extrude it. So extrude, you'll see what extrude does. You can either ex do extrude here or you can press E on the keyboard. So Blender is good for lots of things actually, <laughs> not just one thing, but it's good for lots of things. And one of the things is keyboard shortcuts. So I'm just going to quickly press E, and then it's extruded a new bit out there. I'm going to scale this inwards, OK? So I'm going to press S, and I'm going to scale it inwards. So I'm just going to grab this blue crosshair, which is the Z crosshair, the upwards one. I'm going to left click on it and just drag down a bit as well. Then I'm going to press E to extrude again. So that's going to take it up like so. Then I'm going to press E to extrude again, and then I'm going to press S to scale again, and I'm going to press E to extrude again. Um, so immediately you can see we've created, or I have, you haven't um, created it with me. <laughs> um, we've created this kind of recessed disk thing. I'm going to go out, press tab, and go back to object mode because I want to scale it to squash it. So I'm going to press S and then that scales it uniformly, uni uniformly, and I'm going to press Z because that restricts the scaling on the up Z axis so that you can make it a bit thinner. So that's pretty cool. And then I'm going to press tab again, and then I'm going to extrude that like so. And then I'm going to do a new function while it's in edit mode. So rather than pressing E to extrude, I'm going to press I, and I will do something called inset. So it'll kind of take it in. I'm actually going to right click. I'm not going to commit to that because I'm going to press S and I'm going to take the top in so it kind of goes like that. Yeah. And then I'm going to press I. So I'm going to press I and it's going to inset it like so. And then I'm going to get this blue crosshair and I'm going to left click and drag it so it goes up a bit. Then I'm going to press E to extrude. Perhaps you can guess what I'm going to do next. Um, then I'm going to press S to scale. And then I'm going to press I to inset, and this is going to make the, you know, the top aerial mask thing as well. So make sure this bit is selected, and you press E to extrude. And I'm at the Toronto CN Tower. From the illustration that I'm using to refer to, um, the needle bit at the top is quite high. Um, you can actually add an image on the screen in Blender and other applications. So for example, in Blender. You go to um, background images here and you add image like so. Um, I prefer to have my image next to me because I don't like you know all the stuff on the screen. So once that's gone like that, we've still got that for, 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 for <laughs> face selected, press S. And then that's quite of a nice tall needle going on there as well. 
I'm going to go to the bottom now and I'm going to right click. I'm going to inset so it goes in a certain amount. So now when you're making kind of buildings and imaginary cities, you want to think while you're making it the proportions and the dimensions. So obviously people that study architecture, they spend years looking at the aesthetics of how something looks. Yeah, I studied design, so we did the kind of similar thing through our drawings and also studying in projects. So if something is a bit spatially wrong, then it'll look weird. Example, you know, a really bad idea would be that for the stalk bit. Or even if we're going to take it really down so it's thin, I'm going to press extrude, then scale. It's kind of going to be a bit too thin at the top. It looks like it might snap off. Actually, that's quite good. But I'm going to try and make it the same proportions as the CN tower in Toronto. So it's probably about this, just guessing. Um, so when it's like that, I'm going to press E to extrude again. Actually, that's a bit thick, so I'm going to press S again. And then I'm going to press E to extrude, and then I'm going to press S to scale, and that will taper out the bottom part. Yeah. Then I'm going to press Tab to come out of the object mode, so it goes back to the, you know, the the whole part of it. Then I'm going to left click on the blue bit, and I'm going to drag it up like so. Okay. And then I'm going to go and add a plane, just for a nice little bit at the end to give it a ground. <clears throat> then I'm going to add a light. So the lamp, as it is, sun, and I'm going to left click, drag that up there, rotate it so it's at an angle, um, and I'm going to make it into cycles, it's cycles, and then I'm going to go to this viewport, so I'm going to make the viewport look rendered. And it actually has a sky set up already, which is down here, which is quite easy to do. Yeah, I'll show you that as well. So delete everything, make sure you're in, in this panel, you're in node editor, okay node editor is there and then we're going to go make sure we're in um, world and then add world um, and you can add a new world here and it'll add you a new world so it's got a background and a world output and then you're just going to go add um, texture <laughs> and i'm going to add a sky texture and all you do is left click that and drag it to there and immediately you've got a really nice sky sphere texture that you can um, drag it like a trackball and then it's going to make a cool sky for you like so. Um, so that's just very quick and I'm going to take it off the rendered shader and take it down to material now, right? Um, so basically that's that. Now I'm going to export this mesh and I'm going to go to file and I'm going to go to export and I'm going to go to STL because that's quite a good one um, for 3D printing. Um, and I'm just going to call it, what's it, CN. I think it's CN. Did I say CNN Tower earlier on? It's just CN Tower. So I'm going to press export. It doesn't give any notifications or anything like that as well. And then I'm going to go up to um, this program called Cura, which is a free program. You've got the different versions here. Um, I'm just going to click on 15.021. And it loads very slowly. <laughs> Okay, so you've got this nice screen, and there you go. So if you've done 3D printing before, um, and you've used Ultimakers, so if you've used Fab Labs and Makerspaces, you're going to have an, probably Ultimaker machines because that's you know one of the choices for Fab Labs and Makerspaces. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go and load model file here, and if by magic we've got it in here, but that's actually not the right folder. Um, so I'm going to go to where I should be going, which is difficult to remember. Um, screen class, screen casts, um, nine city. Um, as you can see, my um, files are pretty big and messed up. There's CN, STL, STL. And like so, it's imported the tower already. Um, okay, so I'm going to look to scale it like so. And it's looking pretty good, isn't it? So and that's probably, that's going to be 50 mils high. Let's make it a bit more. And then I'm going to do a test to test how it's going to print. So when we go from 3D graphics to the real world, so 3D graphics to 3D printing, we have to think about how 
um, the model is actually going to be made. So we have to kind of turn into sort of slight engineers and think about the construction of it in a 3D printer and how it's going to stand up and how strong and resilient it's going to be. Um, so what we need to do is go to layers because Ultimakers print in layers, you know, basic 3D printers print layer by layer. And if you can see here, um, it's showing you all the layers, yeah? And it's going to do So we can drag the layers up and down and look to see if there's going to be any problems and we can see the what's going on on the inside as well. But that's a bit more detailed for another time. Um, and you can go to support type and support's obviously going to make your print work. So if we can see here, this green stuff is the support, yeah, like so. And as you can see, there's a hell of a lot of support on this, okay? So I'm going to show you another good way to get around that. So when you're making 3D models, you want to, again, think about the engineering and how it's going to print and how it's going to work in the real world. So this model, which is in another layer, so that's the one I made just now, and this is another layer in Blender, which we click here. I've made it into two segments, and you make sure where you detach the segment, then it's um, filled. So to detach in Blender, you select the what you want to rip apart and you press P and then you um, take apart by whatever. So in this case, it was selection. Um, so I'm just gonna do this very quickly. So I'm gonna export this one and that's gonna be called um, CN top. Okay, C top, whatever. I'm not pedantic. Right click the stalk and export. And we can go to STL and then we can do um, C bot, CT bot, whatever. All right. And then I'm going to go back to Cura and I'm going to go to normal mode and I'm going to delete this one. And then I'm going to load. <clears throat> so we've got CN bot. And then I'm going to load, make sure I don't scale that just yet. And I'm going to go to CN top. Okay. So now we've got two bits going on here. So you're going to have to scale them at the right size. Yeah. So I'd recommend doing it in your keypad. Um, so let's make it six times larger. Six. There we go. And then on this one, let's make this six times larger. Six like so. And let's now go to the layers. So let's go up to view, view mode, layers. <clears throat> and there you go. So now it's going to print layers into print two different elements on the same bit. And let's go to support type. And it's the support type is actually already on there. And it's constructing it. And, and as you can see, there's not really any supports. So it's just a really cool way to break down your prints when you're making simple models. Even simple things cause complications in 3D printing or laser cutting, so always remember that. So anyway, and then you just go to Toolpath to SD, put it on the SD card, put it into your Ultimaker, make sure it's the same Ultimaker they're using, so you go to Machine, press Fire Up Print, da 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 da, then um, you should have your print. Um, it should work. If it doesn't work, you can always ask a technician if you're in a fab lab or a makerspace. So thanks very much. And I'm going to be releasing my book in a week or two. So if you're really interested in that, sign up to my newsletter. And you can also sign up to my YouTube here and also follow me on Twitter and check out my art site for my own art, jamesableart.com, to buy and also more screencasts and tutorials. So thanks very much. And even the stupid robot here says goodbye, but you probably won't see him again because I'm going to leave him up north here near Fort Williams. So don't worry, he's not going to be a kind of some sort of stupid gimmick <laughs> um, or any of that malarkey. So thanks very much and bye for now. Have a great um, week. <laughs>